This project is called Improving the Theoretic Ion Mobility Calculation with help of quantum chemical trajectory calculations. What is it about? We have here the GC, or I'm building up here, the GC, a device which is called an ion mobility spectrometer. This gives us spectra, so certain information, normally a signal strength over time. And this I can use in order to identify substances. Theoretically, I can calculate from this spectrum intensity over time a certain value. And this value I can look up in the table and then I can identify the substance. The problem is, this means that I need for every substance that exists in the world, I need a sample spectrum. And this is of course impossible. So, as so often, we try to refer to the theory in order to calculate the spectra that we know how they should use, uh, should look, and use this one for the identification so that we save some experimental work. But this requires, of course, that the calculated spectrum is good enough so that it can be used. That means that it's as precise enough as the experimental spectrum. This is an ion mobility spectrometer. This is the setup um, that I used to use. This one is now being built up at the campus in Berlin, at the GIU or GUC campus in Berlin. So it's all there. Well, not yet there because it's all packed in crates and by the next few months, hopefully I can build it up there. And I try to build the same here at the GUC. And the ion mobility spectrometer is this small device here. And this is like an electronic nose. So gas goes in, is ionized, and then you send these ions on a journey, measure the time, how long do they fly a certain distance. And then you have this time spectrum, intensity over time, from which you can calculate the mobility. This is why it's called ion mobility spectrometry. And then hopefully this mobility can be used to identify substance so that you know what substance is there. As you see here, the setup, there's a lot of electronics involved here, a lot of power supplies. The device needs here in front low voltages for the detector. It needs for the operation here high voltages, several thousand volts, and a lot of tubes here <clears throat> for the gas supply, so that also there you can work quantitatively how much gas do I have from which substance for your tests, and so on. So that's not just there, yeah, I have gas. No, you need to know how much. Good. This all works fine, but here you see a typical spectrum, how it can look. There's always some signal that's always there. These are actually these ions that ionize later your sample, and they're always there. And then your sample gives one or two or more spectra. For example, here one peak, or here a second one. This is for a certain uh, substance here. What's building? It's monomers and demers, so a substance where only one molecule flies and another one where two stick together and fly. And both can of course be used in order to identify a substance. Both are information. If you know that these are the same substance, of course theoretically there could be different substances then it would be more difficult. So what you want is now, because it might be unknown substances, that you can calculate these values and compare them with calculated spectra so that, as I said, you don't have to measure all the spectra in the world, sorry, all the substances in the world and get spectra from them for comparison. And we see here this works more or less. We see here for different parameters, whatever these mean here does not matter in the end, that this can work better or worse. We see here for the black curve, they are far away from the experimental ones, but then we see these ones here, the one with the MK indication they work better. And the question is now what what can we do in order to make these calculations better? For this we would have to know how do we calculate these values. Basically we take the chemical structure of whatever we want to calculate, draw this with a certain program, then put this into another program and this calculates the mobility. And the on, on this whole way, there's a lot of parameters that we can choose. How do we draw our structure? And then we optimize them. Optimize meaning that according to laws of physics and chemistry, we calculate how does the true structure look from water molecules or whatever. For this, we have a program, but we can feed this program with different values. 
And then afterwards comes a calculation of the mobility. Then we have also a few parameters. And then in the end, we compare with these measured spectra and see are we doing a good job or not. The problem is these programs that we use to calculate the optimized structure they assume that you are somewhere in vacuum and that you are at low temperatures at zero Kelvin. And this is, of course, not the situation what we have here on Earth. We live in an atmosphere. We have 20 degrees Celsius in Egypt, even more. And this means these structures might change. And this is what we see here in this animation, for example. We see how water molecules and the chlorine molecule, and we see how they vibrate. We see how they move. We see how this all changes distances here. So the whole geometry changes, and this means the mobility changes, because with different, different geometries, of course, we fly differently. We collide differently with air molecules. The ions fly slower or faster, depending on how, how they are shaped. It's like a car. I mean, a race car is clearly differently shaped than a, than a lorry, and we all would assume that with the same power, a lorry would never be as fast as a, as a car, but this is exactly how we measure the mobility. We measure how fast are the ions traveling. So that means for the theoretic calculation, we need to have another approach that shows us better how the, the molecules might look under the conditions that we use in our experiments. And there's something that's called trajectory calculation, and this is what you have seen here just in the animation. So you just give the molecule a certain energy and a certain temperature, and then the program calculates variations of the structure. And the idea is, of course, always that if the energy of the structure has a minimum, then it's more difficult to climb out, out of this minimum and to change. So a minimum is always stable. This is like what you learn, for example, with laser diodes or with photodiodes that you can create in the electric bands. You can create the things. And then if the electrons fall into these things, then it takes longer for them to climb out. So an energy minimum is always stability because somebody needs to help you out of an energy minimum. You cannot climb out of this. Somebody needs to give you energy. And this gives stability. It means you spend them more time. As I said, you had this all, for example, in the quantum well laser diode, quantum well photodiodes, and so on. Good. So here we have in this where we calculate somehow these structures and let them move under the influence of certain forces. That's what the program does. And then we see that the energy curve has then a certain minima. And the question is then, does any of these minima represent a very deep minimum that is then the stable one where the substance would be found maybe in real life? And then we would calculate from this the uh, theoretic mobility and compare with the experiment. This all is a setup that fits more into the, yeah, into the topic of data science. But this is also a very important topic for electrical engineers. How do I handle data and how do I interpret data? And this is one of these uh, yeah, very nice approaches where you see it looks like chemistry, it looks like physics, but in the end you don't have to understand this or you will use the programs. But in the end your engineering intuition has to come when you compare this and have to find out which parameters should I play with in order to optimize this consistency between experiment and theory. And all this is then used in the end so that I can interpret when I go with my ion mobility spectrum there once it's working here and try to analyze something and do not know which chemicals I can find there. Who knows, mummies Maybe they, after these thousands of years under the ground, they evaporate something, sicknesses, pharmacy likes these approaches for analysis, military applications are common, work safety applications, I am somewhere and there's a gas that I do not even see and smell and yet it poisons me. With this nose you might be able to detect it, but what if I get a spectrum that I cannot identify because nobody has ever done this before. This is why I need this theoretic approach. But as I said, in, in the frame of this bachelor project, this will be data science, play with the creation of data and compare with the experiment and find out how well does this work or not.